Welcome to another video. Just as you have the quadratic formula memorized, you have to have this formula memorized also. The formula for obtaining the cosine series for any, uh, the, the Fourier cosine series for any function. It's important to know how to obtain your coefficients. And in the case of cosine, you have two different uh, coefficients, the initial and the one that is general. So what, what are you supposed to know? Just know that the cosine series for any function looks like this. We say that f of x is equal to the initial coefficient plus the sum of all the other terms, which is starting from 1 to infinity. So we see we're not starting from 0 anymore because we obtained this separately. So this is going to be a sub n multiplied by the cosine of n pi x over l there. This is all you need to know. And the task is always to find a sub 0 and a sub n. But this you have to have memorized that it's what you have to do for cosine. Now, if it involves sine also, if you're looking for the full series, you just need to, instead of saying just this, you say plus b sub n sine the same thing. You just need to include that and you find both of them. Now, what's the formula you need to have memorized? This is what you must know. Now, you have to know how to find this and how to find this. So, what is a sub zero? We know that a sub zero is basically one over l going from the, for the interval negative l to l of the function that you are working on, f of x equals x. That's it. Now, if your interval is not from negative l to l, if it is from zero to l, it means you're going to need two of it to be able to complete this. So that means you have to put something here. Okay. So it, it says you have to double it. That's the meaning. So, let's go, if you're looking for a sub n, then it's going to be 1 over l also, the interval from negative l to l of this function that you're dealing with, multiplied by cosine, n pi x over l. So, these are the two things you want to put in your head whenever you have the situation. If the situation is from 0 to L, then you need to double it. Okay. Now let's get the answer. Okay. Let's get into the video. So let's begin by finding a naught. Let's go. We got a naught is equal to 1 over L. Then you have the integral. That's a terrible integral. The integral from negative L to L of the function we're dealing with is x. Nice. So what does this give us? Well. This is the same thing as 1 over L times x squared over 2 evaluated from negative L to L. What does that give me? It gives me 1 over L. If I plug in L here, it's going to be L squared over 2. Mm. That's going to be L squared over 2 minus, if I plug in negative L here, it's going to be L squared over 2. No way. What do I get? That gives me 1 over L oh, oh, times 0, so that's going to be 0. Now you can see that this is an odd function, and whenever you have symmetric conditions for an odd function, what do you get? You get a 0, so this is going to be a 0. Sad. Okay, so it means there is no a naught. Let's move on. What about a n? So this implies a naught equals zero. 
So if we go back here, it means this does not exist. Let's go find what the cosine series are going to be in this case. So a sub n um, will be equal to, from our formula also, it's going to be, where is it? Right here. 1 over L multiplied by the integral from negative L to L of, what's the function? The function is x times the cosine of n pi x over L. Okay, dx. Remember that cosine is always an even function and x is an odd function. I don't want to waste time on this one, okay? x is an odd function. So, when you multiply an odd function by an even function, what do you get? You get an odd function. Now, look at the boundaries of integration. It's from negative L to L. It's a symmetric boundary from negative to positive. Remember what we've said about odd functions. Whenever you have a case like this, so this is an odd function. As we have seen in the previous example, so you notice that if you go from negative L to L, you're going to obtain a zero here. This is 1 over L multiplied by zero, which also tells us that A sub N is equal to zero. So all the coefficients you're going to obtain for f of x equals x in the Fourier cosine series will be zero. So you will not have anything in terms of cosine. So the Fourier cosine series of f of x equals x does not contain any cosine terms because the coefficients, both the initial and the rest of them, are always zeros. So, therefore, there are no cosine terms in the Fourier series. In the Fourier series of f of x equals x. I like this. I actually didn't know it was going to turn out this way. Well, maybe I knew. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.